All right, so welcome, Lena. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself and teach us some stuff about health professions, please. Awesome, okay, thank you so much. And it's uh, Joanna, right, correct? Okay. Yes. That's right. Perfect. So thank you so much for having me this evening. My name is Lena Njoku. I'm the Health Professions Coordinator at Cal State Long Beach. And basically what that means is that I put on programming and assist students um, that are at Cal State Long Beach and alumni get to health profession graduate programs. So I'm working with students from freshman year through alumni, helping them um, understand what it means to be um, a competitive health professional applicant. Um, and I am glad that I came in a little early to hear um, the conversation with the current medical school students, because one um, one pattern that I did keep hearing was the path, like having a path. And so when whatever kind of four year institution you all plan on get going into, uh, finding the health pro health professions advisor or health professions coordinator immediately um, to help you walk you through the path of application and competitiveness. So uh, that was a long intro, but that's a little bit about me. And I think you, do you have your little presentation ready? Did you want to yeah. share that? Yeah, I let me see. I won't interview you so much because you have info to dump on us. So uh, can you just Yes. Say so I'm not going to, I don't want to kind of, I know you guys have kind of uh, been listening for quite a while. So what I want to do is kind of briefly go through this and then kind of see what your questions are after. Um, I'm going to try and squeeze this in to like five or six minutes. Is that okay? Okay, so while I am trying to breeze through these um, slides, if each of you that are in attendance can just drop in the chat what year are you, what health profession are you interested in, or if you're exploring, uh, what major do you have, and um, what else? Um, I think just those three things. So what's your year, your health profession interest, and uh, your major. And then if you want to add something else, you can definitely add that. Um, if you're exploring health professions, uh, you can say that too. Okay, so like I mentioned, my name is Lena Njoku. I'm uh, the Whitaker Health Profession Advising Office Coordinator at the California State University of Long Beach. So those of you who do plan on transferring to Cal State Long Beach, I will be your health professions advisor um, that walks you through uh, the process of application. So very quickly, um, this is like a, a brief version of what, um, once you are a Cal State Long Beach student, what you get um, once you let us know that you do plan on going to graduate health profession school and you would like assistance with it. So um, just a little bit of health professions over you, exploration prep, and a little bit of reflection for you all. So what is a health profession student? Uh, typically, all the health professions, the, there's a, a three characteristics that all will hold. There are some, there are some, have some aspect of being a people person um, interested in science and interested in service. So if you want to help people, uh, these health professions have many different ways in which you can do that. And then anyone seeking admissions to a health profession program once they complete their baccalaureate degree. And then pre-health students are actively seeking in and out of the classroom experiences to develop into a well-rounded applicant. So 99% um, of the students that I am advising at Cal State Long Beach are seeking out one of these health professions. Most of students come in their freshman year thinking, you know, um, you know, you, we know about physicians and we know about nurses, but there are a lot of different health professions out there that I want students to expose themselves to so that you understand all of your options um, so that you can make a decision from the uh, basis of knowledge versus kind of what you've wanted to do since you were three. So um, the four-year doctoral programs that uh, most of my students are pursuing are physician, that's MDDO, dentist, pharmacist, optometrist, podiatrist, and veterinarian. And then there is also the three-year doctoral program and master's degrees, which are physical therapy, chiropractic nursing. Physician assistant is a two-year master's program along with public health and then occupational therapy. Um, you can 
currently get a master's program, master's degree in practice, um, but you can also get a doctoral degree within occupational therapy also. So 99% of the students that I am assisting at Cal State Long Beach are pursuing one of these health professions. Many come in wanting to be physician or nurse. And then once they get their feet wet, volunteering, getting patient contact, and really understanding the landscape of healthcare, that's when they uh, get a better understanding of themselves as it relates to healthcare and which of these healthcare uh, professions fits best for them. So if um, you haven't really looked at into or understand any of these, um, explorehealthcareers.org is a great starting point for just kind of understanding the nuances, um, the differences and similarities between these health professions. And that's definitely a key in, in competitiveness is understanding and coming from a place of experience as to why you want to pursue the particular health profession you would like to pursue. Um, just a quick overall, a lot of students think that they need to major in a hard science, and that's a little bit of a myth. Um, many students that I'm helping at Cal State Long Beach, yes, 50% of them are in the College of Health and Human Services, but then I have many in the, I'm sorry, College of Natural Science and Mathematics, but I have many students that are majoring in College of Health and Human Services, many students in psychology, um, many students in um, kinesiology and a lot of um, kind of human, our human services side of healthcare. Um, and, and on that path, they, can, they complete prerequisites. So that's really what the healthcare professional programs are looking for, particular prerequisites and how well you do in those courses, not necessarily the title of your degree, which really is what your major is. Um, they really want to see those particular prerequisites. So any major is applicable um, to go into a health profession as long as you finish the programs that you're interested in, their particular prerequisites. Um, so this is just a quick overview about a gap year. Um, I serve alumni for three years after um, graduation. So that means that um, I highly encourage students to take a gap year and more, especially if they're going into a PEA or med school route. Um, so I'm going to kind of skip through these a little bit. What I want to get to is uh, just the overall uh, quality versus quantity um, when you're applying to any health profession program. So while you're listening to all these, um, you know, all the things that you have to get done, kind of there are a checklist of items that you need to complete to be uh, competitive for health profession programs. Um, so yes, there are those things that you need to complete to pr prepare for school, but you don't want to just do that. Um, that kind of can end up um, that's how you can end up being a cookie cutter applicant. So preparing for school is completing those um, minimum requirements, just checking the boxes of research, experience, test scores, applying on time. But what I really want to see from students that is that they are exploring, understanding, and preparing for their health profession. So are you preparing to actually be a physician or are you just preparing to get to medical school? Are you per actually preparing to be a physical therapist or are you just trying to check the boxes to fulfill requirements for physical therapy school. So you do need to do those checkbox items, but really preparing for your profession looks like exploring, um, networking, leadership, and meaningful activities. So exploring meaning um, just health profession exposure. Even you being here tonight um, in this webinar, you're trying to um, get more information on the landscape of healthcare and how to get there. Um, um, so health profession exposure, healthcare environment exposure, so volunteering at different um, large hospitals, maybe a small hospice, maybe a clinic, and really understand the different um, different areas of healthcare. And then networking, you heard the last speakers talk about mentors, um, how important they are, and then going to info sessions, they also mentioned most of these um, health profession programs will have, medical schools will have webinars. These um, uh, physical therapy programs, they'll have info sessions. Make sure you go to them. Don't wait until you're almost complete with all the prerequisites. When you're starting the prerequisites, that's the time to start going to these type of things. 
students in the process. Um, and then just meaningful um, activities. Um, those are the things that really can set you apart from those that look exactly like you with the, with the things that, you know, you check off the box with. Okay, and just kind of wrapping it up, this is what it means to be a competitive applicant, at least coming from Cal State Long Beach, it's a gap year, having that uh, solid academic achievement, letters of recommendation, research, your personal characteristics, leadership and involvement, community service, and of course, health-related experience. These are all the aspects of a competitive applicant. Um, and so for you, uh, it's good for all of you to reflect on why do you want to help people within the scope of the career rather than any other? So why do you want to be a pharmacist versus a physical therapist? Or why do you want to be a physician versus a nurse? Or why do you want to be a physician assistant versus an occupational therapist? Um, what patient experience confirmed your passion for healthcare? Who are my mentors in healthcare that have helped um, helped you understand healthcare from their lens. And then preparation, meeting with your pre-health advisor, whoever that is, and then creating program spreadsheets with requirements, info sessions, recruiter contact info, et cetera. So you guys can um, screenshot that if you want or um, however you wanna uh, do that. And then that's me. So I wanna leave the rest of the time. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, I'm going to look at who's in the room from you all uh, letting me know uh, what your goals are. And you guys can feel free to um, drop questions in the comments or with my students when I do presentations at Cal State Long Beach, I encourage students to unmute and um, show up. Um, because if you're interested in healthcare, it's a very people oriented career. So they want to see that you have some type of um, initiative in, in showing up. So especially if you're going to an infant session on a webinar, show up. If you're going to somewhere where you're gaining information, um, show up because it can benefit you in the long run. Um, and this is a very uh, network heavy and people involved career that you want to go into. So you should be comfortable with that. Okay, um, so I don't know if you had any questions for me, Joanna, but I am done with that part of the presentation. Um, awesome, I thank you for all the good, good big picture advice on, I think a lot of things that apply to everyone here. Um, I haven't begged you students for questions in the chat, but I think Lena just made a great appeal to what what do you have on your minds and what would you like to show up and talk about here? So anybody have questions? Again, either unmute and chat with us or, you know, unmute and talk, or um, you can drop it in chat, whatever is easier for you. Um, I'm sorry, I have a question. Sure, go ahead, Julia. Julie. Like, yeah, um, so I have my bachelor's in psychology, but when I did my bachelor's in psychology, I didn't take classes as seriously as I do now. Now that I took like, the prerequisites for science, I've been doing well so far, um, but my GPA is like, Bare, no, it's a little bit above 3.0, but like, I know it's really competitive. How can I overcome this problem that I'm going to have when I start applying? So I think this is one of the reasons why it is such a good idea to take advantage of the webinars, uh, the open houses that are starting, because you can ask directly to the source. So are you pre-med? You're interested in going into medical school? Yeah. Okay, so so um, right off the bat, I know that um, Western University School of Medicine now is doing in-person open houses, um, and then I know they also do um, assessments. So if you are at this point um, on the process of completing your prerequisites, you can go to an open house, um, you can chat with an admissions rep, let them know what courses you've taken and that your um, basically what your what your transcripts are and they can let you know what else you need to do to be a competitive applicant for their particular program. And I would encourage you to do that for at least um, a handful, um, if not five or 10 medical schools, just to kind of get an idea of where you are in the process, in the competitiveness process. Okay, thank you. No problem. 
And then it does kill two birds with one stone because you are also, again, reaching out for that networking as aspect so that when you do submit your application, that's not the first time that they're seeing your name. They're familiar with you. They, you've reached out to them before and um, that it's, it's a networking aspect as well as you going into the application process familiar with the people that will be looking at your actual application that you will be submitting. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. No problem. Um, I kind of like experiencing the same thing as Julie, where I'm trying to, I guess, kind of overcome a not a low GPA, but not as a competitive GPA as other applicants. And I've also tried to like find leadership experience now that I've graduated college because I, I already have my BS. I'm just kind of taking classes again at LBCC just to meet prerequisites, but I'm finding a hard time, you know, finding leadership experience to, you know, I guess like beef up my resume and, you know, just be a stronger applicant. Like what would you recommend? So I, I think I would encourage you to step away from the just trying to check a box um, kind of mindset. Like I need leadership. So let me find something to fulfill that box is I think a better kind of, um, way to think of it is what are you doing now already that you can find leadership opportunities within does that make sense yeah that does okay so if you are are you currently working in medicine or working in um so maybe it can be something within your your job but you don't necessarily only have to think of leadership in the scope of i am the president of this club in undergraduate institution. That's not the only way that leadership can be um, uh, exampled. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I just kind of always had that idea. It's like, oh, you know, I missed out on the opportunity to get more involved. So it's not necessarily, not necessarily, they want to see your leadership skills, they want to see your leadership ability, and yes, college campus is one way, but that is not the only way to, um, again, show that, that leadership skill. Since you see lots of students come through, Lena, um, to give you a couple quick examples of other ways where you've been like, oh yeah, here's you know three or four different ways um, that students show their leadership skills. Could you give some examples to our students? Um, yeah, so I think um, whatever your interest might be. So for some students, it might be music, arts, culture, church. Um, I've found that a lot of uh, pre-health students seem to have an interest in music also. Um, so there, at my uh, previous institution I worked at, there was a um, music club that was developed that would play at Children's Hospital, and they were all pre-med students. And um, one of the students I was working with was like a coordinator that would work with the hospital and um, organize how they would, when they would be playing and things like that. So that was a leadership opportunity that that particular student found within medicine, but was able to also tie in an outside interest. You don't, that's, you don't always have to be exactly like that. Like if you're into sports or you're into intramurals or you coach, you know, um, little league, um, what is your thing? Um, do you run marathons? Um, do you have, you know, opportunities to find leadership um, opportunities within that? Um, what are you into? <laughs> Um, think it just kind of be reflective on what are you into and then how can I fulfill these requirements within my scope of interest don't try and do things just to say you did it and to check a box because a lot of times they can see when when um, when activities are are checkbox activities if that makes sense yeah, and I guess one little sentence I'd throw in there is to our students, don't be afraid to get outside of your comfort zone in terms of, okay, I don't feel ready to take charge or expand this, you know, I'm coaching or whatever, but um, if you're pushing yourself a little bit further than you're comfortable with, you're probably edging towards a meaningful leadership <laughs> situation. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Um, other questions? Anyone else have? I don't see much chat here right now, but um, oh, Julie asked if you would be able to um, send them a PDF of the slides if you um, can um, drop. Yes, in. yes. Actually, I can probably um, turn it into a PDF and just drop it here. So let me just go ahead and do that. And did I have any other questions? Don't be shy. If you guys have questions, go ahead and speak up. Uh, yeah, I think I have a question. Sure. Um, is there like one specific thing that you see students struggle with the most on their applications for medical school? Like, like for example, like you see a lot of students struggling with their GPAs or, you know, shattering experience or, you know, is there any one, Thing you can pinpoint? Um, I would say um, what I see, maybe you're saying a difficulty that I see students getting, uh, facing a lot. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, let's see. So I think a something that I do um, see students struggle with sometimes is, and this is why I added the quality versus quantity slide. Um, so a obstacle that I see students face very often is approaching this process as if getting to the graduate program is the end goal and that is not um, starting your graduate program is actually the beginning um, and so when you are when students come into my office and they cannot answer my question of why do you want to be a doctor without it being a generic because I want to help people then that's typically the type of student that uh, maybe um, has not really done self-exploration um, but has really just kind of um, done the things they need to do to get to medical school. So um, to kind of put that in a nutshell, I think the, the biggest barrier sometimes that I see is that students kind of approach this as a checklist versus, um, you know, this is something that this is a career that you should be looking into and understanding and seeing if it's something that you can see yourself doing, um, because it's a long and challenging road um, for you to not understand what's at the end, what's actually at the end of that, at that, of that journey. So um, I think really getting into um, volunteering, understanding health profession environment, um, exposing yourself to patient care, um, see understanding yourself as it relates to how you help people and how you are of service to people. And you get all of that understanding from actually volunteering and actually being in um, the experience of being a healthcare provider for other people. Um, so that is, that's what's really important in, um, in going forward and understanding yourself as it relates to um, this health profession to journey, whatever healthcare profession you would uh, choose to pursue. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. We're kind of winding down on time here. Um, does anyone have any final questions um, for Lena? Sit with the awkward silence for a second. <laughs> All right. Um, I can forward that PDF along. Um, did you want to? Are you okay with sharing your email in the chat for us, Lena? So I can yes. share it out. I know it was in your slides, but you want to maybe drop it in chat. Um, it's so valuable to hear 
your perspective and um, advice. I, we appreciate it very much. Awesome, no problem. Great to be here and just um, encourage all of you to continue to do what you're doing. The fact that you're here tonight means that you are taking initiative, finding information um, so that you can be competitive applicants. So keep doing what you're doing and good luck with your journeys. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. And I dropped um, her email address in the chat also for you all. So, all right. Um, and I'll be in touch, Lena. Maybe I can build a little bit more of a, a connection between, we don't really yes. have a whole lot of pre health advisors. So, yes. any so connections? I, yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think we can definitely uh, do some um, 